Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. So EX2 in theory is literally next week. It releases in just over, uh, oh what is it, a week and a half now I think. Um, super, super excited for this. Um, some of my favorite Digimon ever are in this set. Gallantmon and Beelzemon both. I am ecstatic to have truly like hardcore serious dedicated decks to both of these Digimon. Uh, I mean, I'm like over the moon. So... I think it's time, though, that we go ahead and add these new decks into our meta tier list and see if, they, if they're going to shake anything up or not, or if we're going to keep seeing a lot of the same thing we've been seeing already. Don't forget, though, our new memory marker this month is Narrowmon, so if you're playing some Yellow Hybrid, some Mastamon, or uh, an Ophanimon dedicated deck, this is a great memory marker for those decks. Now, this is handmade out of clay by my wife, hand-painted as well. You can find this on our Etsy store, link in the description below. Very, very cute. Uh, you can also find all of our previous memory markers we've had on the channel, as well as some of our Battle Ready Ink merch, like our sleeves, game mat, and our new dice. All right, so here is where we fell in our prediction for BTA. And honestly, I feel like this was pretty on the nose. I think we really nailed it in predicting the what the BTA meta was. I would say like literally out of all the prediction meta tier list videos that I saw on YouTube, ours was the closest to how it's actually transpired, like straight up. S tier being uh, Imperial and uh, Yellow Hybrid. I, I have Ophanim on there, but that's basically the Yellow Hybrid deck. Um, but yeah, it seems pretty uh, pretty dead center there. Uh, also, the previous uh, format for predicting BT7, we were also extremely accurate with that. So I think we have a pretty good track record moving forward. So I've got a pretty good feeling about where we're going to fall on this format for EX2. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over here. Uh, went ahead and preset it up. This is a, about where we had it on the last one. Uh, with just a couple changes here, I did go ahead and swap out the Ophanimon for the Jet Sylphie, just so it's more obvious that it is indeed Yellow Hybrid. Uh, you could argue putting uh, Rapidmon there instead, but I think Yellow Hybrid, this really drills at home here. Um, uh, I think, though, one change I immediately want to make is making this swap. I think the Yellow Hybrid is taking over the Imperial. Imperial is getting lots of top 16s. Um, I, mean, I got my Nats, fight, Nats invite with it myself. So I think it's uh, you know definitely a capable deck. And it can beat this deck uh, depending on the pilot and the build. Now, uh, but still, I think most of the first place, they're all yellow hybrids um, in all these events. So just going to swap those around a little bit uh, for our S tier, but they're both going to remain in S tier for the EX2 format. Now, looking at some more of these other things, we've got Alphamon here for filling in for the X antibody deck. Uh, I think it's still very much an A tier deck. Um, same with Blue Hybrid. We're seeing some Blue Hybrid get some, some top cuts as well. Um, um, and maybe even more than Alphamon is. So maybe uh, that deserves sitting there. Now these next ones, I think they all kind of struggle a little bit. Uh, we've got Armors here that is doing great against everything except for Yellow Hybrid. Anytime it goes against Yellow Hybrid, Armors suffers. But against any other deck, Armors is doing pretty solid. We've seen it get a couple tops. It did get one first place, I believe, in uh, Latin America. Um, so maybe that does deserve it. Uh, a little bit higher placement here, just because I haven't seen X Antibody do well, but it's had a good turnout, that's for sure. Uh, and then Mastimon also, kind of the same with uh, Armors here, is it's it's got the a little bit of performance here. Um, a little bit surprised, uh, even myself, on where it kind of fell. It's actually doing a little bit better than I expected. I was totally not sure in that last one. That's why I put it at the bottom of A tier, because I wasn't very sure. So we're going to move it up a little bit here. But I think this looks pretty solid. Like, all these decks are solid A tier. Like, they're all very good decks. Yeah, I'm getting, like, really niche, like, moving them left and right. But, like, ultimately, all these decks, uh, if you take the top two decks out, like, all these decks are really, really awesome decks that could, you know, blow out pretty much the all blow each other out completely i think they're all pretty even there in a tier um between each other um but what what makes them higher than others is how they match up against these decks up here and i think that's the the big difference there um and then kind of looking uh, i did change up b tier to our rogue category and what i mean by rogue is uh 
these decks in particular have a uh, when they have a showing, they have a decent showing of performing well against certain metas. Um, so we have Red Ancients here. Uh, this is Red Hybrid has a pretty good matchup against uh, Yellow Hybrid. Okay, just going all the way up into an Ancient Greymon with an Aldemon Inheritable is fantastic when swinging into Yellow Hybrid security. Uh, we've seen Beelstarmon do pretty well. Uh, Shivamon built right and with a good pilot can actually put in some serious work here. Uh, and then the, the rest here just starts to get into really, really rogue. Uh, we've seen Terubimon be solid in the past. It still has that potential. I just don't think it's being played right now. Same with Jessmon. Uh, anytime you can pop off with Jessmon, it's absolutely nuts. Um, but it does have a little bit of consistency issues these days. So that's why it's on the lower end of Rogue. Uh, rogue. And uh, Sylphimon here probably could honestly at this point move down to uh, somewhere into D tier. And D tier here isn't really in any particular order. Uh, but I do think they're at least worthy of keeping on the meta list okay they might not be performing super incredibly well at these big events um but they are you know you do see them at these events here and there you do see all of these decks at uh regionals okay and so they're good enough to actually bring to regionals and at least get some wins under your belt um they just all have their different issues uh, when trying to keep up with these S and A tier decks, which is why they don't quite make it into Rogue, but they do still remain on the list. Okay, I'm not saying these are bad decks. Uh, they're just that they stay on the list in relevancy, but um, they're not good enough to actually compete with the big dogs yet. Uh, and then F tier, these are what we placed as are just bad decks, just not very good. Um, they actually weren't really meant to be get put on the list to begin with, but I decided, what the heck, uh, I'll go ahead and throw them back up here. Uh, Creepy Mon, we've actually seen win. Uh, like, I, I was shocked, okay? I made a deck profile of it. Like, when the deck pops off, it's just absolutely insane. Um, but it does have its issues. But I do want to go ahead and at least move it up into Rogue here. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty nice. Now for where the new stuff falls on our list. Uh, we'll just kind of go in order here. We've got uh, the Beelzemon deck. And where is it going to fall? Uh, it has insane control potential. Okay, can just pop so many Digimon and just delete so much stuff on field. Um, as well as it, it's got a weird consistency thing where you just mill your whole deck and then once you have all your stuff in trash, then you just use that stuff in trash, like evoing into your, your level seven uh, for you know super cheap and then swinging in uh, for a ton of security checks. So it's a very interesting style of play, uh, has a huge fan favorite, so I definitely want to put it high. You know, you'd think I'd want to put it high as much as I want to play it. Um, it's either in an A tier, but I feel like Unfortunately, we got to put it in rogue tier. Uh, it feels rough. Um, but it could probably go uh, decently high up here into Rogue. I think it falls probably somewhere around in here. Um, just because it it does take time to build up. You have to mill your deck. And during that time of milling, you know your opponent can just be setting up so much advantage themselves. And then just pushing for game like Imperial or Magnum or uh, sorry uh, Armor decks. You know They can push for game really quickly while you're trying to set up. And that could take uh, you know a lot of time. And uh, so I think that's going to keep it out of A tier. Is just because some of these decks are just going to outperform it in speed, um, unfortunately. So I'm going to drop it down here to Rogue Tier. Uh, next, we've got the Gallantmon uh, deck, and this is uh, a more control. It's all about deleting stuff with a certain DP threshold. You know, you can increase that DP threshold, but it still does have its limit of how much it can delete. Um, it does have a nice tamer, though, in the form of Takato, giving all of your uh, Digimon in your Evo line, giving them Blitz. So uh, that's really, really powerful to be able to do that and then gain memory back. So essentially, you can kind of reduce your Evo costs of your uh, Evo line for Gallantmon, as well as you can give them Blitz. It's, it's a very, very cool dynamic deck, um, but it also kind of has that same sort of 
bricking issue, right? It takes time to build up into these Evo stacks. Now it doesn't, you don't really need a, like a specific setup or anything like that. Um, so I think it's actually going to fit a little bit higher than Beelzemon simply because it doesn't take as long to set up. Now you do have the bricking issue similar to like Alphamon as well as Wargreymon both here. Uh, it's going to fall in this category with the, uh, all three of these guys kind of sitting in together here doing their own thing independently, but similarly uh, having the same issues in what they're what they're trying to do. Anytime you have to build all the way up into a level six before you can really start doing much uh, controlling or damage, you know, whatever it is the deck you know excels at, uh, it takes time to do that. That can definitely hold it back. Uh, as well as it can't do anything. Uh, a lot of its like specialty stuff is. Um, deleting and controlling the board and if your opponent just sits in raising area you know you can't do anything and, and especially if they get all the way up into something big then you can't delete it because it's too big and avoid avoids all your uh, your big deletion effects now crimson mode itself does take care of that and being able to pop big things and then everything else underneath it will pop little things um, but it is just kind of a, a very interesting deck for sure uh, i'm excited to see what it does i'm definitely excited to play this deck and uh, see where we can take it um, but i think somewhere in somewhere low a tier uh right around these guys next we've got d reaper and i have been dreading this deck for for ages for months and months and months and months um, if you've seen this deck in action, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the Mother D Reaper being unaffected by all card effects, all your opponent's card effects just don't do anything to it. Uh, and it can't attack, so it'll never be suspended. So the only way to kill a Mother D Reaper is to swing over it while it's unsuspended. And it has the inheritables that it get that it absorbs that give it 1,000 DP. So like turn one, it's already at 16,000 DP and just climbing after that, like 17, 18, like it's literally going up 1000 dp pretty much every turn minimum of one per uh, 1000 dp per turn uh so swinging over it uh by you know turn three or four is very difficult even for decks that can swing over unsuspended digimon um so that alone is an issue and then it's just it's got so much board presence once it does build up uh the gatekeeper is a just a stupid good card uh blanket security attack minus one to your whole opponent's field Okay, and it's a security Digimon, so if it gets hit in security, it gets to play out for free, and you can reduce its play cost with uh, Mother D Reaper's effect to get it on field for super cheap. You can get multiples on on field, and it recovers. Like that Gatekeeper is a stupid, stupid strong card. I am not looking forward to it at all. And then while you're just stalling out, just building up this massive board presence. Uh, you're just waiting to drop your bomb, right? When, as soon as you can drop that Reaper, and the Reaper just swings in for all your opponent's security, right? They can wait as long as they need to with Gatekeepers on field until they're ready just to pop off with a Reaper and just, just go ham on the opponent. Um, so this deck is going to be very, very terrifying. Now, it is a slow deck. So uh, very fast-paced decks like Armors and Imperial uh, have a really good matchup because they can just simply outpace the deck. Uh, Gallantmon also has a decent matchup uh, simply because, you know, you can... Uh, clear security for free now again you still run the same issue of having to uh be able to clear uh you know actually win over the with the dealing with the gatekeeper so that's still an issue um but yeah i think uh i think it's an s tier i think it's the bottom of s tier um but i'm curious to see the 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 matchup between d reaper and yellow hybrid i think that's just going to be a stalemate slaughter fest is what that's going to be uh i'm not looking forward to it if the day that those two decks collide uh you might need a break from digimon after that because <laughs> the these two are going to be just absolute stall queens and kings oh man it's going to be crazy um so yeah i think it's i think it's going to actually go into s tier here I, i'm just calling it now i think I think D Reaper is going to be up in here. It's it's stupid and it's super affordable. It's like all rare and below. I think there might be a super rare. I think the Digitama might be a super rare. I could be wrong though. I've never heard of a Digitama being super rare. It might just be a rare. But yeah, uh, crazy crazy deck. Uh, Gallantmon. This is the second Gallantmon here, so we'll go ahead and skip over it. Next we got uh, Mega Gargomon and. Uh, 
I think this is an interesting deck, but it's got a very large DP threshold uh, that you can, that it takes a whole lot of setup. You got to get a ton of tamers on field, uh, and then you can start to pop off. Um, and it just takes time, and then it's like you, you can stun your opponent for a turn, and then you got to pray they don't delete your stack. And if they delete your stack, you're just you know, set so far back. Anytime you lose your stack in, in this deck, it just sets you really, really far back. Uh, it doesn't have, like, a good alternative strategy, and it's just sitting out there on field. Uh, it's it's kind of awkward, and I think, I think I'm going to have to sadly put it down here into the D-tier category um, just because I don't think it's got a good matchup against, uh, you know, a lot of what we have going on up here, uh, sadly. We do have a new Terrier Mon, which is another target for our Golden Armor Rapid Mon, which is always nice golden armor rapid mon being stupid strong and any deck that has multiple tamers that has a good use of tamers you know like the mega gargomon deck does it uses both willis as well as henry uh you know both both in large quantities decent quantities i think you run probably about three each um so that yellow uh rapid mon actually uh, pretty pretty solid include in this deck but i think it's still not enough to really put it up into rogue category i i could be wrong but i really don't see it being that way uh next we got justy mon i know a lot of people are super excited about justy mon he's just a very efficient black digimon uh it gives me kind of vibes to um what's uh the there was two purple digimon there was what tactimon and and Tidamon. So Tactimon and Tidamon gives me vibes like that. It's just a very solid card, Justimon is. Uh, three Evo cost, pretty uh, pretty manageable. Has a really nice Evo chain that actually works great with its strategy. The level five, being able to play out your tamer and you need your tamers in play because they give you tons of effects. Uh, searches as you know for consistency, uh, as well as triggering multiple Justimon effects. Uh, yeah, Justimon's just super cool. Uh, uh, now, I don't know if there's enough yet to build a whole deck around Justimon. Now, he does get more support in the future to make him even better. Um, so, I think we're going to throw him in Rogue tier for now. Um, he's just a solid piece. He is a solid card. Uh, the strategy that is there is a solid strategy. It's just a very, very small package right now. Um that I don't know if there's enough for a full deck or not. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, I haven't got to really test it out too much yet, but just seeing what I have and seeing it in, in the little bit of action I've seen it in so far, um, it is still a very cool uh, like strategy in general. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw it up into... Uh, we'll throw it up here around Red Hybrid and Shivamon. Uh, somewhere in this Rogue category, I think is a nice place for it for sure. And then the last deck we're going to talk about for our new entries onto the list is Sakuyamon. Uh, this is going to be using all the plugins, all those option cards uh, that your tamer gets to play for free. And just every time you get to play them, you know, you get to unsuspend with a Sakuyamon. And like none of, none of her effects are once per turn. So you just get to do like crazy, crazy plays. As long as you have multiple of your tamers on field, you can just keep going and going and going. Uh, and then recycling back your your options out of the the trash so you don't even need to like you know worry about putting in too many bricks in the deck because you can just recycle so you don't need to go too overboard uh, it's just a very efficient deck and how its uh, play strategy is now i don't think it's going to fall in s tier simply because uh while it is very cool and very uh like consistent and that sort of thing it doesn't have like a tremendous amount of power to it okay it does require a little bit of setup you know you got to have your tamer a couple tamers preferably you know they're decent uh, uh, or play cost uh, and then you have to evo up into a mega so you know that takes time you got to play tamers and evo into a mega you know before you can really start doing anything um so that's gonna hold it back um I don't think it's going to fall in A tier either. Uh, I I think it's better than D tier though, but I think it's like low end rogue. Now we do get Miko mode eventually, which will just really ramp this deck up. Having a secondary mega that just 
literally works with the strategy just being able to you know evo into right back into another sakuyamon like just evoing back and forth back and forth just like uh i forget what is it slide evolution i think is what they how they refer to it uh just like going back and forth between the two different megas on the same evo stack is very very cool design wise uh as well as that card is just absolutely gorgeous i love miko mode i think it's a uh like whoever the artist was on those uh the regular art and alt art just like blew it oh, out of the water incredible card um but until then i think it's gonna just throw uh, we're gonna throw it down here into rogue tier uh feeling pretty comfortable with that i think it is a very cool strategy just requires a whole lot of setup and a lot of pieces to really get it going and uh, once it starts getting going though it just starts to steamroll after that but it, you know that takes time uh similar to a lot of these other decks that we have in the low rogue tier you know they, they take a little bit of setup you know you got to work through some bricks uh potentially like just Mon and things like that or requiring some sort of setup um you know cherubimon creepymon both uh all that setup does take time um trash setup board setup whatever whatever the case may be um so that's kind of the, where they're going to fall here is in that low rogue tier can punch up into these uh i've said it before in like tons of my videos uh where we talk about the meta and the, our, our prediction list and most of these decks, I would say anything in A tier and Rogue tier can take on an S tier deck and win. Uh, it is very pilot dependent. Uh, someone that really sticks to a deck. They really know the ins and outs of it. Uh, we've seen it with BL Starmon. Okay, we've seen BL Starmon literally take first in in these regionals competing against these other decks up here and getting first now it is few and far between and i think that's because you know the pilot the pilot that just really sticks to these decks and make them work uh that's what these rogue decks are all about someone that really knows them knows the matchups not that you just know your deck very well but you know every deck really well you know how to go against every single deck in this game with your deck okay so that takes an extreme amount of knowledge uh an extreme amount of skill for players but they can do it okay so all these decks down here in rogue tier can punch up into s tier easy um not easy but they they can do it uh same with the the a tier though they can they have a little bit even easier job though of punching over s tier uh than than rogue does rogue you got to really be dedicated uh a tier you know a little bit of luck you know just a, a drawing into a decent uh solid hand uh you know every game and you can take these s tier decks the s tier decks are more like it's it's almost impossible to brick you know it's like i i get my, my my combo off or i can just do what i need to do super easily uh with very little um like input needed or stress or you know i don't really need like these perfect draws or anything like that i can just do my strategy pretty much consistently every single time and that's what these s tier decks are is they're they're just very uh consistent beyond belief in doing whatever it is their strategy is whether that be just throwing down a crap ton of tamers and doing a little bit of board control or you're going into Pyodramon consistently incredibly fast getting tons of draws and searches uh and then just can pop off super easily after as soon as you get your pieces you know you can just blow through all your opponent's security very very quickly and then i think d reaper here is also going to be in that kind of category of i can just stall my opponent out for you know indefinitely until i can get into my my finisher as soon as i get into my finisher i just win uh that's kind of what d reaper is doing as well and that's why it's sitting in s tier uh again at the lower end of s tier but it is s tier also and that'll do it uh curious to see if i if i missed anything i did forget to put uh green hybrid here but i think green hybrid is actually kind of taking into the Shivamon category and green hybrid and Shivamon are kind of interchangeable i've seen a lot of green hybrid decks using Shivamon in its top end now and Shivamon decks are kind of just green hybrid decks also um so that's why it's not on the list here um i thought about making two but i was like ah just i'll leave it as one and that's why it's not on the list here uh, but if i missed anything else though please let me know uh if you don't like the list let me know why let me know what you don't think about it i think so far we've had a really good track record with predicting these out uh and we'll see if we continue the streak okay so far we've gotten the past two like pretty much dead on so uh hopefully we can do it again